All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about event structure. And there's five main elements or components to an event structure that really needs to get touched on and understood efficiently. In today's video, we're going to be talking about event structure, and I'm going to be touching on five different categories. The first category is addressing the issue with the apparatus. Every apparatus, vault beam, bars, floor, men's gymnastics, parallel bars, rings, pommel horse, all the apparatuses have a required amount of space needed to even perform on the apparatus. And then additionally to that while there is space required to perform on the apparatus when it comes to training there's even more space required to then train effectively and efficiently with that apparatus a good little uh, game you could play with yourself essentially is go look at your local competition or the gyms that are closest to you that are performing better in certain areas. Maybe you, there's a gym near you that performs better on bars or performs better on beam. And you want to really understand just one component of why they are so effective or efficient with their ability levels and results. Go check out their gym and look at their space. And look at that event space and see how they structure it, see how much space they have. And then compare it to the amount of space you allot for that event structure. Simple example would be is if we both have 12 athletes in our group, but your gym only has three beams and my gym has four, that just means that my athletes get more turns than yours do, essentially. Now there's a lot of ways we could structure this differently, but just looking at that. So apparatus, you have basically, you're dealing with a compromise. And so we have space, okay? How much space do we have for that apparatus? However, there's a compromise because it comes down to space, or then you have a limited amount of space, which then means you have to be better at time management. So you have a time management problem. Problem. And you don't want to lean on the time management problem. Like the more space you can allot for your apparatus to be effective and efficient with it, then the less you have to worry about the time management problem. Floor would be a prime example of this in women's gymnastics because most gyms only have one floor. And if you think about how many athletes need to get full routines in on a floor, boy, that just burns a lot of time because no one can use the floor or then you're time managing it and you're figuring out how to get tumbling passes in between somebody doing their floor routine. And it just doesn't feel like or look like a lot of the other events because you only have one floor. Imagine if you had four floors. If you had four floors, just like you might have four bar sets or four beams or something like that, it's like, gee, how many more turns would the athletes get on floor and what would it look differently? Now, most of us all time manage floor routines and we're, we're, we're working with it. Some gyms have two floors so they can work with it. Um, it doesn't usually show up to be a huge problem, but again, just playing with the idea of apparatus and how apparatus and the space that you're using with that apparatus affects results, it's, it's very real. And you can, you can tie it down to being a very real quantifiable thing. The next thing is format. Format is how are you going to structure the event essentially? How are you going to structure how the athletes move through the event? How are you going to structure um, the way the assignment is gonna get delivered? And so there's really only three different types of formats that you're gonna use. And, some events are going to lend more towards one, event, uh, one type of format than another, but the three types of formats that you have are basically lines, stations, and circuits. And so you just have those options essentially. So you go to bars, you might circuit, you might go from one bar to the next bar to the next bar, you're gonna circuit them. You might stay at stations where everyone stays at their own bar and then you progress through the skills on the same bar. Um, you're not gonna use the lines format. Lines format usually works more on a beam setting or a floor setting where everyone starts at one end of the floor and does their movement, a line, lines through the floor or beam, they're traveling down the beam in a line and they're just going back and forth. So, Lines is kind of limited to more of a beam and floor situation. However, you do want to know, you know, what event perform and, and also like level, uh, outcome, like all these things will affect, do I want to use a circuit or do I want to do stations? And 
how you structure or decide which one of these is going to happen is just going to change the type of result you're getting. And so understanding that. And we can dive further into understanding formats and outcomes by how you use formats in another video. Flow. Flow is a little bit like formats because formats is going to naturally tell you sort of what the flow is. But flow needs to also come down to how your apparatus layout is working along with kind of what your equipment is doing and where you place your equipment. Because you have to think of flow like the athlete starting here, let's just say, and then how are they going to move through the whole entire process to get back to their start position. And the flow needs to actually make sense on a cognitive level. Sometimes, you know, I've seen, uh, and I've done this myself because you're, you show up to an event and you're like, okay, last second, oh, I need this other thing and this other thing, and oh, I forgot we need to work on that. And pretty soon it's like, okay, we had, we had these simple, this simple flow going on where the athlete's just gonna go, okay, we're gonna do a circuit, and you're just gonna transition here, here, and here. But then all of a sudden, you're like, uh, but we need to get more leg lifts in, and stall bars just happens to be over in this awkward space over here. And then you're like, oh, I need to put a floor bar over here. And then, and then pretty soon your flow looks more like, okay, well, we're not going from there to there, so now we're gonna come over to stall bars, and then we're gonna come back over here, and then, well, when you're done, you need to come back over to this spot, and then we're gonna come over to this spot. And understanding how you want that flow to look, super important, because the more consistent you can be with your flow, and making sure that it's the flow is the same, there's just one less thing for the athletes to have to think about. Because if you're inconsistent with it, athlete gets to this spot right here, and they don't remember everything that's gonna happen, what do they do? They go to maybe a natural, oh, well, okay, I just go to the next spot, and then they get told, no, no, you're not supposed to be here, and then they get sent over there. That's just one more area of conflict that doesn't need to exist, and that can totally be planned out and solved and, and doesn't even need to happen at all. So just by strategizing your flow with your apparatus and your equipment and understanding what format you're gonna use and how the flow is going to work, it, it just changes a lot of the anxiety and stress and constant conversation of no, don't go over there, you're supposed to go over here. Flow, figure out where you're supposed to be going. Make your flow simple, think simple shapes, circles, squares, these are all good, okay? Zigzag lines, not good. Those are really complicated. Most people can't follow zigzag lines. So uh, you just think about how your flow is. Make it so that's simple shapes, simple flow. Equipment. Equipment is another layer and it obviously is going to affect your flow. But equipment is not your apparatus. Equipment is more along the lines of um, your blocks. If you're on bar, it might be your floor bar. It might be the mats that you're using. It might be low beams, not the actual competitive. When I'm saying apparatus, I'm thinking the actual competitive event itself, not modifications or alternatives to that competitive event. I'm thinking, what does that competitive event look like? How's that layout set up? And then what's your equipment that's kind of supporting that competitive event? And equipment is huge because the, the question, the, the thing that I see come up in my gym, but I've also seen it in other gyms that I've worked at and uh, summer camps and other things, other air at clinics, just other events that I've been a part of is you basically have X amount of blocks over here or whatever. These are all crazy shaped blocks, whatever. You have X amount of blocks. You have a, a wedge, just random shapes. You got, oh, okay, I got an octagon or something like that, or no, it's not an octagon, but it's a six-sided object. Um, so you have all these different shapes, and then it's like you have how many coaches who are all like, I need the same thing. And so this coach goes in and grabs something and they're like, hey, I'm gonna go take this block and now I have a block. And this coach grabs something and pretty soon you have one random person who's like, I don't, I don't have anything to work with. So the ideal thing to do, and this is what I've focused a lot of my time and energy on doing, is making sure that your apparatus is isolated as its own thing and it has the amount of equipment that you're going to need for that apparatus and you don't need to share equipment. You don't need to share blocks, you don't need to share wedges, you don't need to share octagons, you don't need to share anything. That stays on that apparatus and nobody else has to borrow it. Now that's, that takes a financial investment, but boy the amount of time that you're gonna save and energy you're gonna save by just having the equipment allocated per apparatus so you don't have to worry about transferring app uh, equipment over back and forth and then accounting for it and then you show up and somebody took it over to the preschool side and you're like oh I need that and then you got to send a bunch of kids over to the preschool side to, to haul a block over or something through all these classes to get back to bars essentially 
allocating your equipment for your apparatus saves time, energy, and effort. Um, the other thing about this is then you have a space problem because I have some smaller gyms and of course this is all you know hindsight's 2020. Um, I didn't necessarily allocate to have space for the equipment I needed per event and so now I have a blocks and stuff kind of stuffed in awkward spaces that if I would have done a layout differently or gone to a larger size building I could have accounted for the equipment I'm going to need off to the side and where am I going to store it all and so that's another thing is where are you going to store this and how is it going to affect the apparatus and where you're storing it uh, it all plays together and then the last thing you have is pacing pacing kind of goes more into the story of conversation and validation and redirection but pacing it's, it's very directly connected to this whole event structure. And while we'll d dive further into more pacing in another video on conversation, the aspect of pacing we want to think about is what does the, the heartbeat or the tempo or the uh, energy pulse feel like when you're on the event? And that's very much part of the event structure. There's a high level gymnastics coach. She coaches at like a lot of the elite camps and she does beam. I'm not going to say her name, you can just guess who she is. And her pacing on beam is oftentimes, get on the high beams, go, 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 okay, give me my three, my five, okay, get back onto the floor, okay, go, 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 get those things, yep, good, okay, get back onto the high beam. And the girls are just like, boom, 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 boom. She's like, here, do this thing, fast, fast, fast. Okay, go over there, do this thing, fast, fast, fast. Okay, it's pacing. She's pacing them, and she's getting a result based off of her pacing. And so all of this condensed has to have some form of pacing. It all gets funneled into, smashed into this pacing. If your pacing is not set up for your result, then th this stuff doesn't even, doesn't matter as much because that pacing really is huge. If you're just kind of like, okay, move through the circuit and everyone's just like chill and, and they're not, they're not getting through, they're not getting their turns essentially through their flow. They're not doing that. Or you're not really strict on the type of format. Some people are doing moving, some people are staying on one station way too long and then they're kind of circuiting and other people are just moving through all the stations with one turn. I mean, all of this stuff can create problems. If you get pacing figured out, a lot of this gets ironed out because you have a, a consistent like, I want three turns on this bar, bop, 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 get off the bar, go to the next one, get to the next thing, hit it, dot, 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 good. I don't want you standing around. So if you're standing, I want you to do this thing. Or if you're standing, I want breathing exercises or whatever. And there's this constant like, go rest, go rest, go rest. And then that's the conversation that's happening. That's your event structure. And so pacing is very, is very much of a, a, you could almost think of it like your tempo, right? Um, and yet it's, it's going to drive, it's your tempo and it, it drives the energy. And so we'll just uh, put a little drives energy. G. Um, and so if you're feeling that there's an, an energy problem, you go into your event and you just feel the energy and just go, this energy sucks. I hate this energy. What I'm feeling, change your pacing. Figure out how to change your pacing and your tempo. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to go faster and harder and, you know, like heavy metal music, just be like, bah, bah, bah. you don't have to go there. It doesn't have to elevate necessarily to get more effort. But you do need to have something that everyone can kind of buy into and draw themselves into and get their, their pacing, their heart rate, their body movement, their energy all synchronizing on the same type of pacing in the same conversation that you're having. Uh, how many times have I seen, I mean, I could just, I mean, maybe you've seen this too, but I mean, I've, I've seen coaches who are high level energy, go, go, do, 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 and then the kids are like, just like doing the same stuff. Uh, they're all like lackadaisical and they have nothing. And the coach is like trying to get them to straighten those arms, point those toes, you're doing a great job. And they're all high energy, love it, great. And the other kid just like, I don't really care. And they're just doing whatever it is they're doing. That's not matching. And so part of the pacing is getting the instructor, the coaches pacing to align with the athletes and get everybody on the same page because we're all moving through this space. And so that's what we have with event structure. Um, we'll dive in further on other videos, but that's just the overview with Event Structure.